everybody. It's Ron and Hope Unfiltered, Real Raw Relevant, and I'm back. She's back. It's been I'm a long, back. long time. Like what, like four? Three. Y'all have had me running all over the continent. You've had you running Preaching. all over the continent. No. Yes. Doing this book. No. Preaching. Come <coughs> hires. But it's been amazing. We got people buzzing around here like bees. Yeah, this is two twelve week. This is two twelve week. This is crazy. I mean, I'm we've got, in, we've got, got what red half, eyes. half of the East Coast staff here. Yeah. Of course, we're doing it on the West Coast this year, and uh, I mean to tell you, I love it though. I do it, too. it energizes me when I see everything it's moving be like so this. So good. So, by the way, if you are within driving or flying distance, and you can get here when this thing breaks. It's going to be an amazing, amazing two days. I'm so excited about May it. May the 2nd, May the 3rd. Right. But I'm glad to have Hope back with me. I tell y'all guys, she's the she's the fun one, and she's the one that makes it lively, and she's a lot easier to look at. So I've been substituting me and been substituting Jonathan Mendoza and substituted Chase. Chase and got other people in here, but now Hope's back. And tell them what we're talking about. The kind of people unhealthy not people. to have in your life. Unhealthy people. Well, we've talked about unsafe people yep. a couple of weeks ago. I'm going, I'm going, we're going to take this to the next level. Okay. Because this is, you know what? There's a uh, lot of them. Yep. This, is, this didn't come from a book. So there's, there's a lot of people's built, written relationship books. Um, I did a whole teaching series, what, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, and shipwrecked. Basically talking about this, it has nothing to do with marriage. It's just about people. And um, your emotional health will be pretty much dependent on how you manage relationships. I agree with that. Because when you get into a relationship, there is a level of permission that they have Mm -hmm. to that person, that part of your person. Who they are, what they carry. What's in their heart affects you. Their past, their attitudes, all of that spills over onto you. I mean, like you can say, nope, they're not going to affect me. Absolutely, they are going to. That's a ridiculous you. statement. Yeah. Yeah. And the relationship, any relationship gives access. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, you know, if you're just an acquaintance with somebody, they don't have access to your emotional health. Right. But when people get to the friend stage or more, which would be a dating relationship type. Absolutely, people have access to that emotional part of you. And for us to have emotional integrity and emotional health, you got to know how to keep those things solid. We've talked a lot about boundaries to be put in place. We've talked about that. But I want to actually talk about the kind of person. When you see this, yeah, I want to do some when you see this, not X them out, but you better put up some flags. You better have some red flags go up. And you need to process some people slower than you process others. There's some people that I just, you know, you see no red flags, so you let them in a, a little quicker. Then there's sometimes there are red flags and you choose not to see them. Mm. There's sometimes you are not aware that the red flags are there. And so, and those are the ones your mom usually sees yeah. and tells you about later that you were totally blind to. Right. But, uh, because any, there are people that your flesh <coughs> wants to be that's around. The, that was the first thing yeah, I was going to talk your about. Your flesh likes it, even though it's you okay. know in, in your heart it's not good for you, but your flesh sure does like it. The first, the first category of people by experience, this is not a book. This is Ron and Hope's life experiences, and we've had a lot of them. Because we're only 29. Yeah, would be... Watch for the people who only appeal to one side of you, which yeah. is your flesh. Right. <laughs> the, the fun side, yes, the laughter the, side, the, the, the relaxation side. The people side. that share none of your spiritual values, none of your spiritual boundaries. They don't honor them. They don't share them. Mm-hmm. Well, if they don't share them, they're not going to honor them. No. Because they're not their values. They're just yours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and... So they, uh, but they highly appeal to the flesh side of you. And uh, I remember Mike Murdoch had in one of his books one time, he said, be very careful to people that excite the flesh, Mm. that rouse the flesh. I like to put it this way. 
when I'm preaching out of Romans 7, the flesh and the spirit battle, mm-hmm. I like to put that there are people that pull the best out of you. I would say the spirit side. Right. There are people that pull the worst out of you. And a lot of times, if we feel like we have not had fun in a long time, or our life is not given to many things that are pleasurable, we are very vulnerable to that type of relationship. Yeah. We are vulnerable to somebody that comes in and rouses that part in us that is the enemy of God. You sleepy? Oh, sorry. You're not boring. I am just I tired. must be boring. No. <laughs> I'm just going to say, man, I must be tired. the most boring teacher like ever in the teaching, whole world. In the whole world. Boring I'm conversationalist. Tired. It's been going nonstop. <laughs> but yes, keep going. But the, the just flesh, let me yawn when the I'm flesh thing. Um, if if all that part of me that I'm trying to get under my feet and man, you know, you manage your flesh. Yeah. If I can get around this certain person and I seem to lose all control of those areas of my life, I don't care how exciting it is. That is a dangerous relationship. Right, it is. Because the flesh, the Bible says, is the enemy of God. Mm. The carnal mind is the enemy of God. Satan is not God's enemy. Satan is defeated. The only thing God says is an enemy is a carnal mind, carnality. The word carnal means flesh. So the thing... I can't get a. I can't be in a relationship with somebody that arouses the part of me that fights God. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, Ron, you know, we walk around and we act blind and we act like we didn't know. Oh no, you and, see them. And I mean, you know, I just think about my kids when they were teenagers, or you know, you can just in your mind name that group that you didn't want them hanging around, or that one person. And they would act so clueless, you know, like, what? What's wrong with them? Or I can't believe you don't lie or don't And now they come back around and say, you should have never let me get anywhere around so-and-so. You you do know it. I know in times in my life, the people that I knew, but my flesh liked it so much. They made me laugh so much, you know, and and you got to understand the the voids in your life and where you're going to try to fill them and and you're unhealthy if that if that's the state you're in that's an unhealthy state so you can't make good decisions you know it's bad but you can't make good ones and it's a frustrating place to be i remember the the counseling that we went through one of the things miss denise at living water asked if there was a relationship that got you in a mess, she would say, "What did you get from the relationship?" Mm-hmm. Remember that question? Yeah. She say, "I want you to, I want you to write down, or I want you to talk about what you got out of the relationship." If you start examining the relationships that you're in, and I got in a room with you by yourself and said, "I want you to write down what you're getting from it," could you list me anything spiritual? Right, godly. Could you list anything godly? Could you list me anything healthy or whole? If not, I'm just being honest with you. That is a relationship that needs to be examined because uh, it may be fun now, but every one of them 100% lead nowhere good. Nowhere good. All of them. All of them. They lead nowhere good. They're going to have a, there's going to be a bomb that's going to go off and there's going to be collateral damage everywhere because nobody can live a life that appeals to one side of yeah. their person, well, which is know, the flesh. The flesh, the Bible says you sow to it. You reap from it. You reap. Whatever you sow so to it, you're going to reap. It said you reap destruction. You reap corruption. Yeah, corruption. Yeah, corruption. Dis- yes. I'm sorry, you're right. Yeah. It said he who sows to the flesh reaps corruption. Corruption. Whenever, whenever you are around people who appeal to that, something's being corrupted in it your is. life. It is. It is. And you cannot think that it's not. You cannot say. There's script. What is the scripture that says, um, I'll have to look it Bad up. Bad company corrupts good character. Yes, bad company, not the not the opposite. And you think that the character don't change the corruption; the corruption changes the character. That's crazy. That is crazy. The Bible says that. Yes. Yes. So when you have those type of people that appeal to your flesh, if you give them great access and you become bonded with those people, what it will threaten is the ones that you connect with by the Spirit. The one with the flesh can ruin the. You can have a bad one that can ruin all the good ones. Because like I said, whenever a bomb goes off, there's always collateral damage everywhere. Who gets the collateral damage? All the people that love you the most and are connected to you. You remember that old Jackson 5 song? 
I don't know. One bad apple can spoil a whole bunch of I don't know that one. Yep, it's true. I don't true. remember. Oh, baby, give me <laughs> one more chance. I remember that one. So anyway, Ronald. that's number one. Let's get another one in here before we talk about some of our uh, beloved advertisers and sponsors. Uh, the second one uh, is a very, very famous character in the Bible. A lot of characters in the Bibles represent spirits. So you can say a Vashti spirit, mm -hmm. an Absalom spirit. An Absalom always wants preeminence. Mm -hmm. He always wants a position. Um, but then you see like a Jezebel spirit. This, this lady Jezebel uh, used to be talked about all the time in our early goings. Mm -hmm. I never hear everybody mention her no more. And I'd say she's running rampant through America. Nobody mentions it anymore because we have drifted so far church-wise well, from spiritual things. Jezebel is the spirit that masculine, that wants to make women masculine and emasculate men. Mm -hmm. She had eunuchs around her. What are eunuchs? Yep. They, all of them have been castrated. She took the manhood away from the men that would be around her. Yeah. So she wanted control. She, yeah, she, she will take manhood away. You gotta understand this. So she will celebrate your lack of manhood. Another thing about Jezebel is Jezebel is always trying to find dirt. Mm. Usually, with so the she people, can one up exactly you. right. She there's something she wants, and she's got to find dirt on you to get it. So she will get access to your life, not because they like you, but because they're trying to find the dirt on you, so that everything you say can and will be used against Ooh, you. Lord, Naboth had a vineyard, and. Jezebel wanted Naboth's vineyard. He wouldn't because it was given to him by his father. He didn't want to sell it. So she had him killed. What was it she wanted? What is a vineyard? It's dirt. The Jezebel spirit, the character in your life uh, that can, can pose as something else, mm. but it only is trying to gain access to find out what's wrong with you. Wow. And we're talking about relationships. Something we got to examine. Yep. Before we go any further, I am so excited. We got a new sponsor, um, Song Finch, and I love them so much. I don't know if you remember, Ron. Uh, about I do. Two years ago, I, I had do. a song made for you at Father's Day. Yeah, I do. They did it. They personalized. It was just so precious. So, you know, when you're listening to a song on the radio and you, you get also that had feeling, one made for me at Myrtle Beach one time. When we were dating, you remember that? Ron. You remember not that one? Not by this company. You sang a Whitney Houston song. Yeah, but not this company. That was on a little cassette tape. Yes, you had people Lord make have it. mercy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, when you're listening to a song on the radio and you get the feeling that the, the song playing was written about you or just for you, now imagine having the power to gift that same feeling to someone you love with an original song from Songfinch that actually is written just for them. Uh, we I did this for you on Father's Day, right. and it was so special. Songfinch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your very own life and the people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and it lasts forever. Whether your song is for Mother's Day, Father's Day, an upcoming graduation, or wedding, or just to show a loved one how much you care, start your song now to lock in a top Songfinch artist. For a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free so you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere, anytime. Go to songfinch.com slash Ron and Hope and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming for your original song for free. That's a $50 value. Again, my URL is songfinch.com slash Ron and Hope. Don't forget to share your song with us too. Songfinch.com slash Ron and Hope. And Ron, are you ready? Right. I wrote. Uh, are you ready? I wrote it for you. Listen. Gratitude and every day our cups run full. Of not just coffee, but I love to over and over. You wrote that one? You tell the same old story. 
change But I'll listen every time And I love you better out of town I'll always be your county line You give me 50 things that you love about me But there are countless ways that I can say Got you wrapped around and behind. It keeps going on. Kevin tricked me. <laughs> I asked him, I said, why is there a speaker? He said, I said, a monitor? He said, yeah, it's yep, a monitor. it's a monitor. He tricked me. You like that? I love you better out of so, town. I'll uh, always be your county line. So you you, you wrote that and they do it? Yeah. So okay, what do you do? Cool. They ask you, you know, tell me things about that's special about your relationship. We sit and have coffee every morning. He always wants to tell me 50 things he loves about me. He loves our family. He's a godly man. Uh, he nicknamed me County Line. And they take <laughs> all this stuff and compile it, into, compile a it into a song. That's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? Well, I hadn't heard the whole song, but I'll listen to it and thank you later. All righty. I won't thank you on Unfiltered. So anyway... <laughs> So Song Finch did that? Yes. Very cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you, baby. Um, let me forget. Well, we're talking about Jezebel. Yeah. I don't want to go from that love song to Jezebel, but anyway. No, you it's, can avoid <laughs> Jezebel. Yeah, it's it's to find dirt. An another thing is the, the manipulation of Jezebel. And the problem about being manipulated is most times people don't know they're being manipulated. But, you know, she, it works. she manipulated Ahab. And Ahab was known as spineless. I don't know that Ahab was spineless. It's hard to be a king if you're spineless. You got to be a warrior to be a king. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, uh, he loved the woman, and the woman knew his vulnerabilities, and she twisted him every direction she wanted to twist him. If there are several people telling you someone's doing something to you, you need to listen. Yes, you do. If there's one person, you know, unless it's your wife. Yep. But when you got <laughs> when you got four or five people that care about you saying, I'm seeing this or I'm mm -hmm. seeing because a lot of times Jezebel's working, you are blind to it, but you're being twisted like a puppet. Yep. And a whole bunch of different directions. So she all the, the relationships where they always want to find the dirt, they always want to find the scoop, they always want to find out what's wrong. It's not to cover, it's to expose. And they're manipulative and they're deception, deceptive in the way that they treat you. Everything that you do is for their outcome. Mm. It's never for you. Everything they do is for, is for their, their outcome. Their, yeah. It's never for you. Those are the people that you've got to be careful for, not just a dating or a marriage relationship, but a friendship. You ever had any of those? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. How'd you I've, get rid I've of them? I've fought all these. That's how I can talk about them. How'd so. you get rid of them? Well, you have to be made aware, first of all. You know, I've been on this kick about to my staff and my family and everybody about being self-aware. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that I love most. Not that I've, I have rid myself of all my blind spots, but I think that's one of the things I like about getting older is hopefully you have less blind spots. Yeah. And, and you're self-aware. You come to the realization of who you really so are. So now, you know, these things, okay, you got me last time. Mm. But the Bible says, do not be unaware of the devil's devices. Aware, aware, don't be unaware. Mm -hmm. So I think I kind of know what to look for. I know what to listen for. And and you feel it. <laughs> yep, On discern the it. On inside of you. It is a, it's a knowing, it is a discerning factor of being filled with the Holy it's Spirit. It's a troubling of your spirit. It is a troubling yep. of your spirit. You get around them, you're just that something's yucky, off. ucky, ucky. Something's you off. can't put your finger on How many times have we ever said that you said something's to not each right. other? I'm like, we don't something's know not what right. it is, yep. but there's something there and it's just not right. Something's off. And you know what? Your gut you gotta doesn't trust it. lie. You got to trust it. Yep. And so, because that's where the Holy Spirit is. The next thing I would say that you got to be careful from that are very, very dangerous relationships are Judas's. Now, everybody's like, duh. No. Let me go a little bit deeper. I went into depth in my book, The Necessity of the Enemy on Judas. I zeroed in on him. Mm -hmm. Without Judas, Jesus wouldn't have made it to the cross. That's true. Okay. 
so he was an important figure in Jesus' life, even though he was, he was a betrayer. Here's the problem with Judas. I mean, the light's about to come on, guys. Are you ready? Judas is a friend in your presence, and he's a friend in the presence of your enemy Ooh, at the same time. I know. You better watch out for someone who is a friend in the presence of your enemy. Of your enemy. Okay. Right. Judas, they're supposed to love you. Judas was in Jesus' circle, and Jesus and Judas was a friend to the elders and the scribes and Pharisees who, all, who ultimately gave him 30 pieces of silver yeah. to sell him out. So he sits in their circle, and he sits in Jesus' circle. That's the problem with Judas's circle. He sits with you, and he sits with the people that want to take you down. Right. And both circles think he's their friend. That is the problem with Judas. Yes, it bothers me when you're hanging around somebody who is sought to do me harm. Exactly. Yes. Boom. Yes, Shaka, it bothers me. Laka laka. Yeah. Well, you know, we need to forgive it. No, 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 no. And I can be friends with yes, both of you. Exactly right. Uh, well, no. 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 No, you, you can't. made a choice. You made no, a you choice. Can't. When you know this person has harmed you, you know me they've harmed me severely. They have not reconciled they, that yes. harm. Yes. And, and then you are befriending them. Well, that is going to corrupt you. That yes, company is. is going to corrupt yes, you. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I'm going to back out slowly. Judas, well, everybody thinks of just Judas as a betrayer. Like, well, we know we need to stay away. From well, how do you spot a betrayer? They're a friend to you. And they're a friend. And they're a friend to your enemy. So good, Ron. Yep, that's happened to me a few times, and I mean, just it's hurtful. I've it is watched so it happen to you, and it was very, and very painful. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. How did I thought no. we were cool, but I see you over here with this, who you know hurt me so horribly. That speaks volumes to me. So yep. no, you're not my friend. Yep, we you're both not had a safe relationship for me. Right, I can't <laughs> trust my heart in your hands. Mm -hmm. If you're over here clapping Here's, for the one who hurt me. I had a um I had a staff member one time, very close. And the the staff member's exit was not a good one and ended up taking a lot of people out of out of my church, a lot of people. I don't know an exact number, but it was it came close to an exodus. No, no reconciliation, honestly, to this day. No reconciliation whatsoever. No acknowledgement of harm done, I don't think. Unless it's happened, I don't recall it. And about three months later, I was invited to a conference of a very good friend. Mm -hmm. I remember this. And this person was on the stage mm -hmm. during Involved. the praise and worship of the conference. Yep. At the same time, they were splitting my church. And you were a speaker. And I went, and the, and the person there saw the, the very uncomfortable posture that I had taken. And I remember, I, you, you remember I said this, because I'm not a cutting person. I don't cut. No, you don't. But I, if you take me a long, long way, uh, I'll, it takes a long time to get me there. But I'll, and, this, and this person had caused me a lot of harm. Caused me a lot of harm with family, with friends, with church. Cost me a lot of credibility. And um, then I went, and I was just confused. And I'm sitting right here, and I'm about to speak, and this guy who is in the midst of splitting my church and starting a new one is on the stage. Is on stage right in front of me to a person who is a very, very close friend of mine. And so after the service was over, with, he said, "You know, I I had him down and he helped me out." He said, "Are we good?" I said, "No, I'm not good." Yeah. And he looked at me confused. I said, I'm not safe in your house. Yeah. That's that that, my word. I said, I'm not, I said, I'm not safe in your house. And unfortunately, <laughs> that type of behavior continued with mm -hmm. that quote unquote friend. Yep. With relationship after relationship after relationship. Yeah, I'm not safe. I'm not safe here. Why? Because you are a friend in the presence of my enemies. Okay. And so that is how and I can it, hear people right now saying, but aren't we supposed to love everybody? Yeah, but not trust. Yep. 
Yep. I love everybody and I forgive everybody, but I do not I trust everybody. I do not everybody. have to be in relationship nope. with you. No. Nope. God nowhere tells me that I have to be in a relationship with you and God tells, don't tell me anywhere I have to trust you. God never commands yeah. me to trust anybody but him. Yeah. And trust come only trust only <laughs> repeated comes with reality. repeated reality. Repeated realities. I trust that you are good because you've been good over and over and over. And I trust that you are bad and unsafe. Because you've because been unsafe you've over been and over. Unsafe mm-hmm. over and over. I trust and over. that you are trouble because you've yes. been trouble over, over, Absolutely. over and over. So you teach me what to trust by the repeated reality. And so I think this is good stuff. I mean, it ain't out of a book. These are things where you and I could come, man. We, you, t- you know, take our shirt off, show you our back. All the, you know, our back looks like Rambo. We got scars right. there to prove it. Um, <clears throat> another thing I want to talk about the Absalom spirit. The people in your life that are self-absorbed. Mm. The people that Make come around, the people that them. come around you, and all they have in mind is them. Yep. Um, I'm gonna tell you one of the most disappointing things. Hope a while back, me, me and you were talking, and I, I got a little bit vulnerable with you, and I got vulnerable. But but you you know you came back with some instruction. You thought I needed. You, I told you. I said, you know, I did, I said. I just don't have a lot of friends. I said, especially on the West Coast. I said, uh, you know, number one, it's millions and millions of people. Number two, it's all spread out. People drive from hours to come to the church. And we kind of moved way out, mm-hmm. you know, on, on a place by ourselves as it is. So I just, I don't have a lot of camaraderie. Because we like those turkeys in our backyard. Yeah, we got turkeys we in like our backyard. Country. We got a lot of critters in our backyard. And anyway, you said, Ron, you really need to try to make some friends. Here's the problem in my situation. It is very difficult to make friends if somebody needs you. Yeah. There's no equity in that it, relationship. It, 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 it doesn't corrupt it. It just changes the, balance, the relationship. Yeah, the it just changes of it. the relationship. There's always a heavy weight on and, one side, and yep. and I think a healthy relationship is equal. It's give and take, give and take, Must, give and take. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Laughter, tears, laughter. You know, back and it's a back and forth thing. And when everybody needs you, it's just boom. That's not it's a friendship. A heavy, not. That's not a friendship. And and so a lot of people that come to me, they need something. Mm-hmm. That does not mean they're bad people. I'm not talking about I got a bunch of takers in my no. no, that's not what I'm saying. But they, they need something. Yeah. But when when you come to me and you need something of mine, that that doesn't that, we got to put you in a different category. Yes, it's not a friendship category. Yeah, it is a relationship. Category. But it's in a category. And so I talked about the difficulty, number one, geographically, the, the season of life I'm in, and then the position I'm in. Yeah. People will seek you out for help. And I want people to seek me out for help. I gave my life to serve God and serve right. people. But it but makes you can't it, put them in the friend at the, category. At the very same time, it makes it very difficult on a relationship. Yeah. I had somebody a while back. Uh, that I told you, and I don't want to give too much away because a lot of people watch this thing, um, you know, that I told you, I said, you know, I kind of got a little excited about this person, somebody that was kind of uh, coming into my life, and I'm like, wow, and a few conversations, and I like what I saw and like what I heard, and, you know, nothing really see any red flags, this and that and the other, and about the time I began to let them in, they dropped that bomb. I, I really would like for you to consider blah, blah, blah. I need this, and I remember my heart just, Sank. Sank because I immediately, it wasn't bad, but I got to take them and move them yeah. over to here. <clears throat> you feel used the, the, by it. Yeah, you feel the, like they, you do. they're using you for so, something. So, <laughs> and that is not so a So people will pray and say, God, I want you to use me. And like, you know, he will. He sure will. Yeah, he will. He'll use you. Other people will too. And um, so I think people need to watch out for for the for people that are self absorbed and they enter the relationship for what they can get out of it. Yeah. Anybody that can't reciprocate or give back, that scares me. Yeah. Because you're gonna diminish me and you're gonna deplete me and you're gonna leave me standing there like a mummy. And uh, you know, there was a there was a day hope when I was young, I was I was so naive about all this. I I thought what I was supposed to do as a pastor was be everybody's best friend. 
And then these things started happening to me. If I can just be honest with you, that it never happened to me before, not in high school, not in college. Mm-hmm. Just, man, all these twisted kind of things started happening. And I would tell you, I said, you know, I would almost go through a funeral type grieving process because I had never seen so many relationships come and go so fast and so violently in all my life. I wasn't prepared for that. Nobody in Bible school prepared me for people don't always have your best interest in mind. No. And I was really naive as to church people yeah, we just, would have my best interest yeah, in mind. No, I think what there needs to be about a whole year long course in college and in high school on the nature of people. Managing people on in their relationship. On the nature with, of people. Yeah. People, you know, I think our expectations are just so skewed. And we just need a real quick, swift slap of reality of the nature of people. Just like we've let people down, we've hurt people. People are going to let us down and hurt us. It doesn't stop hurting. But, man, you go into life sometimes with, you know, a lot of rose-colored right. glasses. And right. Well, and it hurts. We've been we've had got our time. I try to keep it to half hour. But I got one more. So let's give just a few minutes to this one, and we'll start signing off. I can't think of the name. You know, we, this is not scripted, so you know it ain't like I got my notes. I'm going by here. There's one of the one of the churches, the Apostle Paul. Or was it one of the one of the Titus or Timothy, one of the pastoral epistles? I can't recall right now. He said, I had to leave, and he named the person behind. He seeks the preeminence. Mm. Paul said, I had to leave him. In other words, guys like that are not going to make the journey with me. Mm -hmm. Preeminence, people who are image-driven. This probably in the last 10 years have been some of the most painful kicks in the backside I have had that for people that will destroy you yep. to save their image. Yep. Dis- and I, when I tell you destroy you, I mean throw you under the bus and watch you get backed over 20 times. Yeah. And somebody you had great trust in, but when their image was threatened, right. it wasn't truth. Right. It was throwing and chunking everybody under the bus that may threaten that image. Yeah. And uh, we've had some really, really disappointing people with disappointments with people we thought loved us, but they loved their image and were willing to sacrifice us on the altar of that image in in a minute. But I thank God for it, though. You know, I'd rather be shown truth early Mm -hmm. than to gain ground in years and vacations and investment and money and time not knowing that that's and not there. knowing that really yeah. is there and then it hurts even worse so i'm like lord just show us the true colors right now quick image driven people are charlatans because they become whatever crowd they're in yeah so whatever crowd they seek to win at that moment they become that mm-hmm. those are probably my worst hated personality trait yeah. Hey, not, I didn't say dislike. I said hated. If you're the kind of person I don't know who you're going to be when you get in certain environments, mm-hmm. I will run Chameleon. from you. Chameleon. I will run from you. You will not be my friend. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you, I will watch you in the fire, and I will watch you in pleasure, and I'll watch you when you're with your wife, and I'll watch you when your wife ain't around, and I want that person to be consistent. Yeah. All the way through. And then that is a relationship that makes me feel safe. But when you become whatever crowd you're in, you scare me. Yeah. You scare me. And, uh, well, we we become all things to all people. I'm not talking about winning souls. I'm talking about you go in a room and it's this kind of people and you become a partier. And it's this kind of people and you become a worshiper. And it's this kind of people and you become a gossiper. And Mm -hmm. you just become whatever. Why? Because you have no core. Yeah. There's no, you're not sent. There's nothing that centers you. And that type of person will drag you to their side if you hang out with them every time. Hope I can handle it. Ron, we can handle it. I can, I, I'm just trying to get them to come to church. Well, let's see. Let's see how that works. So, I don't know. We didn't get this out of a book. We may need to write one. I just, we just talked about four or five different types of people that you really got to watch out for. Why? Because I heard somebody say, don't ever put your emotional health in the hands of another person. I don't know that that's totally possible. 
You could disrupt my emotional health horribly right now if you wanted to. Why? Because I care about you. Mm -hmm. And you have access to that level of me. There aren't many that do. My mama could upset me right now. Mm -hmm. I got a few people and friends that could upset me. My kids could certainly upset me right now. <laughs> That, so and you know, they do. so there's people <laughs> writing writing their psychological book. Don't ever allow other people to control you. That's impossible. You'll be you won't have nobody in your life. Yeah, because other people that you really love have access to your emotions. Yeah, yeah. you you can trigger a myriad of emotions. So be careful. In me. The bottom line is be careful who you love. Yeah, because be I've, I've, I've also you, like, said get this: that close. if I don't love you, you, you can't, can't hurt, hurt me. me. Right. I mean, you can go out and tell the paper a lie or so. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about here. Yes. If I don't love you, you can't hurt me. And um, so, but it, but when I love you, whoo, I'm vulnerable. Yeah. And so. And, and peace, you know, living in peace and living in unity is the goal. You know, we we want to live in unity. We want to dwell together in unity. One, oneness, being congruent of the same material. And I, that's so important. I think peace is at a premium. It is. <clears throat> I saw a guy, a Christian guy. Um, I think, I don't know if it was YouTube or if it was Instagram or Reel or where I saw it. I see him doing it a lot. He's a Christian guy that he interviews like five. I don't, I don't think they're in the adult entertainment, but they're like provocative, very loosely acting and dress girl and they'll have all five of them like at a podcast and he interviews different ones all the time and he asks them stuff about what you know what do men want what do you sip do you ever see yourself with a man and then the guy looked at him and told him he said ladies he said i don't think you understand he said you think men just want your body and he said you think a man just wants your looks he said obviously by the way you're dressed and the way you're talking he said man wants peace he said, a man desires peace. And I sat back and said, I don't know who told him that. <laughs> There's a lot of truth to that. It is. You just said that. To keep your peace, I run from drama-filled people. I don't want to get into that one. Uh, I run I run from people that His change. Life is chaotic. With, yeah, I, I, I run from that. Not that, I want, and manipulative. not that I won't minister to you. Right. I minister to every type of personality but trait. But my close circle. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you can't be in that close circle. Because I'm giving too much of me away to that circle. I love hard and I love deep. And uh, if I give that much of myself away, you got to earn it. Yeah. So anyway, it's been good. Man, what's about 40 minutes, baby I dog? Know it. We went a long time. I'm going to let you close it out. We, her we were reunited. We were. And it feels so good. I'll get to hear the rest of my song when this is over. I know really it. Well. All right. This is Ron and Hope, Real Raw Relevant. Listen. Tell them, about the next one. Tell them about the next podcast. It's live. Okay. But first, you've got to subscribe if you're watching Hit on YouTube. the like button. Like it. Share, Share it. Share it. Comment. Please. Let's interact together. Tell somebody they need to watch it. Yes. So next podcast will be live. We're taping it live. During 2-12. During 2-12. So that's going to be really interesting. So you don't want to miss it. All right. It's going to be Guys, good. Guys, we love you. And until next time. Ron and Hope. Real. Raw. No, relevant. unfiltered. <laughs> <laughs> real. real unfiltered real, real raw relevant. we'll see you guys real soon